Well, hi everybody. This is why I use Stellarium and why I, I set up my own custom landscape in Stellarium. I'm showing you my view uh, from my yard. So you can see it's pretty poor. Here's my astronomy shed. And you know, I, I, I've got a really limited field of view. Let me, oops, rise it upwards here. You can get a better view of it. So here we go. And here's my big opening. I got a really, uh, quite a big opening to the south. And then here's to the east. I've got nothing to the east. Uh, to the north, I got a little bit, but I, I actually got a, right in this opening right there, that's my view of Polaris. So I got a really good view of Polaris. But then that neighbor's tree gets in the way from getting uh, a lot of the polar, circumpolar constellations. Well, how do you like my new look? My new, I'm getting all set for uh, Picard in the series. Uh, this is my Christmas present. Uh, anyways, so you just watched my video uh, on my... Uh, where my shed is, and you might wonder, why on earth did I build a shed there? In fact, when I was doing some research on building these astronomy sheds, a couple, a lot of the sites said they wouldn't even bother putting them unless you had like a 360 degree view in a field somewhere out in the boondocks. Well, I got something to say to that, and that's poppycock. You're gonna put your shed, or you wanna put your shed where you're gonna get the most use out of. And I'm married, I have a, I have a family, I can't just bop out on a, on a note on a quick notice. So right now, I I can just go out there. It only takes me less than fifteen minutes to go to be up and running with this astronomy shed. Uh, furthermore, if it's cloudy out and it suddenly clears up, which does happen occasionally here in the Northeast, I can I'm out there. I can go zip out there where I wouldn't have set up before. Or if it's supposed to be clear to start off with and it suddenly and then it's going to get cloudy later and I wouldn't bother setting up again I can go right out there and uh, I'm, I'll be imaging okay because I have such a poor field of view I got to do a, a couple extra things and that's where Stellarium comes in real handy so most people would be fine with the default landscape but I actually made a custom landscape not only that I made a modified custom landscape and I'll show you what I mean in a in this video so I I made a blog post and I will put links to the blog post so you can follow along at, uh, in written directions and I'm not going to show you exactly how to do it I mean I'll, I'll, I will try to show you as much as I can but I have links of other YouTube people that really did a much better job or, or really did a good job that I used in order to make the custom landscape. So I got links to them in here as well. Okay, let me show you how I built this custom landscape. Now, first up, before I get started, uh, this is from my website and I'll post a link in the comment section. There's a couple of videos I think I mentioned earlier that really helped me out. One was done by Sarihi I can't say her last name. And then this other one was from Amateur Astronomy. And I think this is the one I used uh, more. And again, I'll put links to these in the comments section. First off, making the landscape. There's a, about four different ways you can do this. And this came directly from the Stellarium website on customizing landscape. There's the polygonal method, single eye fish method, there's a single spherical method and the multiple image method. And I did it with the third method. That's how I made this. And the directions for Stellarium, from Stellarium, they seem easy enough, but I wasn't able to do it using Stellarium. I had to use these, again, these websites right here, these YouTube videos. They sort of laid out what they did in a step-by-step -step fashion. All right, first off, thing you have to do is you gotta go into Photoshop or whatever imaging process software you're using and make a canvas or image and you wanna size it to 2048 and one by 1024. And here's what I mean. If I show you the image size, you can see uh, 2048 and 1024 pixels. That's what you wanna use for the size. Next thing you want to do is you want to import that panoramic 
image that you took. And here's what that looks like. So step three, you want to make the sky as transparent as, as possible as you can. You can do this, making it transparent. Uh, you can do it even more, do a much better job of it. And next, what you're going to want to do is you want to save this image to the desktop. Now, then what you're going to do, uh, before I do that, let me just show you something else. Um, you want to make it so the, um, the horizon is really right in the middle of this image. So I had to do it again after making this and realizing I did it wrong. I came back and resized it. You see how I raised it up a bit? So now it's horizontal. Okay, so here's your image. And you could have done a much better job of getting rid of all this, but mine it was just too difficult. I've got too many trees. So this is the best I could do, uh, getting rid of the the, uh, the sky or making the sky transparent. So now you want to save this image as a PNG file, and you want to call it landscape. And then you're going to save it. I'll show you where you save it. You want to save it in the Stellarium folder. Now the Stellarium folder is on your C drive under Program Files, under Stellarium under landscapes and under custom there's a, there is a custom folder and if there's not a custom folder make a custom folder and then you're going to call it landscape and here's that image all right the next thing you're going to do is a little tricky here you're going to take this right here and you can i'll, I'll put this in the comment section as well you want to cut and paste this and put it into an a text file you can do it in Word and then save as a text file, and you want to put this and call this landscape.ini and put that into this folder as well. Put that into the um, as one as one of the files in the uh, folder, and here it is in mine. So I made a text file called the landscape ini, and I and this is what's in that folder. Okay. And then here's my landscape image. And what this does, it reads it and converts it so Stellarium can read it. Okay? Okay, so if it's done correctly, if you start up Stellarium, it should appear that the, the, default, um, the default image has been replaced with this image. All right, and for most of you guys, if you have a decent field of view, you're probably done. You're all set, and you're pretty happy. Me, on the other hand, you'll look at my image with, with that landscape. It's pretty limited here. You can see how much of it, the sky is not even showing. I can't even see what's coming up. So I went further, and what I, I, made, a, I made a modification to this, and I'll show you what I did. Oh, one other thing I failed to mention. You notice how on Stellarium it has a south, southwest, west, and has a north and the east and all that. If your image isn't lined up correctly to the north, south, east, and west, what you have to do is this. This here, let me show this. This folder here's what the text file looks like. You can just change this. My mine, I had to change the angle rotate to 85 degrees. You can just keep rotating it until north is north, south is south, and east and west are all lined up. The other thing you should change in your um, in this folder is the altitude. So this is my altitude and this is my latitude and longitude. And altitude meaning my height. So this is my height and this is my lat and lon. And this thing you can adjust. You'll have to keep adjusting your picture until it uh, lines up properly. Okay. Now, what did I do? I had to, um, like I said, most of you guys, you may be done at this point, you're, if you're happy with your image and the way everything looks. What I did was I made a custom, custom landscape. So I, let me get rid of that thing. I made a line, a transparent line that I outlined. So here's this. And I just outlined the tree line and my horizontal and made everything else in between transparent. 
I also had to do one further adjustment. And if you notice what I did up here, I, I raised that line because I realized when I was, um, you know, my my original picture here, I didn't get all of this tree. And so I had to readjust that. So now it covers that tree. And what my Stellarium looks like, close all this down. What my Stellarium looks like is this. And you can see it has that red line and that's my, that would be my landscape. Let me do it at nighttime. So just the time here. Do, 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 do. And now you can see what's going on. Currently I'm doing the Flaming Star Nebula. And so with this custom landscape, the way I've got it done now, I can find out how much time I got on it. I've got a lot of, a lot of time on this thing. So in my view, uh, the Flaming Star really doesn't become go out of the trees until about 7.30 or so. And how much time do I got on it for tonight at my house? Uh, so I can go to about 12.30. At 12.30, so 7.30 to 12.30, that's my window for the Flaming Star. And I do that with all my objects. So, because, you know, like I said, I got such a limited field of view. Uh, anyways, I think that's all I have for you for now. And we'll see you later. Thank you.